All right, Felix, you have some concerns about the destruction of the nuclear family, yeah? Yes, I do. Tell me about it. What What are your concerns? What do you see and what's happening? I see that secularism normalizes divorce. And it's saying, oh, okay, people get a divorce and children live in two separate households, it's fine. But it just didn't work out with the parents, but... That's not something that should be normalized. We can't glorify single motherhood. Okay, uh, let's let's start there. Okay, yeah. I heard we shouldn't normalize it. It's not a good thing. Why? I also would like to jump in on this at some point. Um, but yeah, go ahead and answer this question first, if you would, please. Yeah, Um Children going through a divorce and then having to live in two separate households, they spend less time with both of their biological parents. Or if a child is just with their mom and not with their father, they're spending less time with their father. And divorce does this to children, so it's not good for their development to spend less time with the parents. And the split itself is traumatic. Yeah, sure. I mean, I think what you're getting at is that children are experiencing distress because of a lack of uh, connection to their parents. By that same token, jobs that make you work more than 40 hours a week are bad. Uh, hobbies like golf are bad. I mean, I, I don't really think that you can say that divorce leads to bad outcomes for children because we don't really see that in the research. There are also, some interesting correlations and in things, but plenty of other uh, factors that need to be brought into this. Uh, Derek, please, let me let you take over here. Uh, yeah, I also wanted to point out that the um, uh, children who are living in a family environment that's hostile, violent, angry, um, that's not healthy either. So sometimes the lesser of two evils is to split up. It's as simple as that. I agree. Um, if there's abuse in the home, divorce is the lesser of two evils. But that doesn't mean that divorce is a good thing or that it should be normalized. We should prevent abuse, not say, oh, it's but a you also mentioned you also mentioned that it's a, um, a secular thing. I think you mentioned that at the beginning, right? But if you look at the divorce statistics, uh, as I understand it, the ones with the lowest divorce rates are atheists, Lutherans, and Catholics. Those with uh, at around something like 21%, something like that, whereas uh, evangelicals and other Christian faith uh, denominations have higher, like around 45%. So this doesn't sound like a secular issue. Uh, this sounds like a people issue. Secularist doctrines say, oh, it's okay to get a divorce. Most Christians say, no, divorce is not of God. I, I'm not aware of a quote-unquote secular, secular doctrine that I've ever read that says divorce is good. Uh, I can actually point to a number of different religious contexts that would uh, express the idea that divorce is at least allowable or acceptable or sometimes necessary. Uh, last week, Jim on this show detailed some da data around the reality around who is and is not getting divorced. I, I don't really know how to help you here, Felix. I also want the best thing for children. I want the best thing for families. I want the best thing for everybody. And in a lot of cases, the best thing is for two parents to no longer be in a relationship with one another. That is absolutely true in a non-zero percent of cases. And I, I think that we have to look at this in terms of, well, yeah, sure, fine. No one should ever, ever, ever get a divorce. Unless they want one, in which mm. case they should probably get one. I mean, isn't that eventually where we come down to on this when we're saying, well, no one should get a divorce except in this in this situation, this situation, this situation. Let's not normalize it, but let's allow people to get it when they should or when they're supposed to. But like, let's not make it normal. Let's let's only let people do it under very specific circumstances. And then we as outsiders who don't know anything about what's going on in their relationships, whether they're abusive or whatever else we should shame them for it rather than normalize divorce. Yeah. How is what um, you're presenting different from what I'm saying here? Um, also, it might be worth noting that um, people who 
Um, uh oh, went off track here in my mind. Go ahead and continue. Go ahead and answer his question. Let me re reconsider that. Yeah, Felix, can you yeah, walk us through the about, issue I, that we're solving? Yeah, I didn't say. I didn't say anything about shaming people for getting a divorce. Um, I didn't say anything about making it illegal. That would take a huge authoritarian type of state. What's the difference? That, what's the opposite of normalizing? If we shouldn't normalize, then we should fill in that blank for me. We should work with social workers and churches to when people want to get married to say, OK, is this a healthy relationship? Um, we should try to um, bring counseling to people who want to get married and have children. Uh, we should try to just minimize terrible situations that we put children in. That's yeah. actually what I wanted to that, jump on that there that uh, I went sure. off on a, a slight tangent about, if I may continue with that. Mm -hmm. um, one of the things that so many religions do, especially Christianity, is to um, frown uh, upon marriage, uh, sex before marriage. And as a result, you find a lot of people getting married young because they aren't used to having, they haven't had sex, they're not they're not, um, they're desperate for it, but they're not allowed to have it. And thus marriage is the only option that they're supposedly morally able to do. So if you give them uh, the, let's say, the freedom to have sex in a uh, safe sex environment, then people are more likely to make better decisions when it comes to marriage, you know, not marrying out of horniness, but marrying because they really care about someone and want to live the rest of their lives with them. Uh, so that would be one thing that would be helpful. And uh, religions don't go along those lines, unfortunately. What do you think, Christy? Yeah, no, I mean, I, I think that it's all fair to say. I like I am one of those marriage therapists that you are advocating for Felix and I want to help people with their relationship I want to help people who aren't married yet decide whether or not they would like to get married I'd like to help people who are married figure out how to have the healthiest happiest relationship that they can I work with people who are considering going through divorce and I don't ever tell them no don't do it and I also don't tell them, yeah, you should definitely do it. But I help them come to the conclusion that is best for them, which is exactly what you are advocating for. It sounds like you're saying on one hand, like it would take a really authoritarian government to force people into being able to end their marriage or maybe they shouldn't get into a marriage unless things are perfect. But I, I just don't see that that's what's happening in these counseling offices. I don't think that that's what social workers are doing in these situations. They're helping people use the tools that they have to make the best possible decisions for themselves. That's the system that we exist in. That's the system I want to exist in, where people are doing what is right for them. And ideally, they have good support from their community, from their culture, to help them make these decisions comfortably. That's what I was talking about, giving support to people um, yeah. while they get married, trying to m minimize divorce as much as possible, uh, because we're, we're saying it's not a good thing, it's not the ideal thing, and it's just willy-nilly, get a divorce whenever you want. Promoting that type of culture isn't healthy for um, society, nor for children. Uh, would you guys agree that it is harmful? Most children do not want their parents to get a divorce, that they prefer that their parents stay in a healthy, loving, committed relationship. You know, I don't know that I could answer that, and I don't know what that answer would even mean if I could, but I would be pretty uncomfortable with actually making that assertion, even if we could make it, that the children want their parents to stay together. Uh, you know, just speaking exclusively from my own personal uh, experience, I was so fucking relieved when my parents split up. It was very much the right thing to do. Uh, it has dramatically improved my relationship with my mother and it has made her life a thousand percent better. So, I would second that as well. My, yeah, for my own situation. Like, we're uh, a couple of later anecdotes, in life, but for but my there's parents. There's plenty but of data. Same thing. Yeah. 
So Felix, I'm all for people making the best possible decisions for themselves, and I am all for giving them tons and tons and tons of resources to do so. Do we agree on all of that? I agree. Yeah. Okay. Well, yeah, we fair enough. Means, just not the not the outcome. Uh, Felix, I would yeah, encourage you to really focus on your own relationships and how you can make them as positive as possible to focus on the relationships of people you love. See if you can't offer some kindness, some support, some resources to the people you care about, perhaps the people whose marriages are a little bit shaky right now. But I would definitely encourage you to let go of this belief that staying together is the only or the best thing for everyone to do because that belief is not serving you and it is not serving the people in your life. It's clearly not something we can support with any meaningful scientific data. And so I would challenge you to let people make the best possible decisions for themselves. Yeah, let people live their lives. That's, that's fine. Um, I, I'm not going to force people how to live. Cool. Well, all right. Uh, I don't know if you've got anything else here that you want to really jump in with or, or if there's more to be said on this topic, but I'm glad that we can at least agree that people in marriages are the ones most qualified to decide whether or not to stay in those marriages. I just have one more question. If we have time. Sure. Yeah, what's that? Most of, in many of these situations, their decision whether to stay together or not almost excludes the children's well being. It's just the relationship. Shouldn't their mentality be that, okay, we, the, the, the kids should be a factor? Yes, children should be a factor in whether or not parents decide to end a marriage. I, I agree with you. And as somebody who I'm, I'm just making the assumption here, Felix, but I'm going to suggest that it's highly likely that I have had intimate conversations with a great number of people about whether or not they should stay in their marriage. Certainly, I imagine more than you have. And I never once have had one of those conversations with anybody that didn't involve concern and consideration for the children involved. If you're saying as a society, we're too careless and flippant with divorce. Okay. All right. I don't really know what to do with that information, but maybe it is worth kind of being careful in the way we discuss divorce and the way we represent it in film and, and all of these different kinds of things. But I don't think that there is this massive problem that you're presenting of people getting divorced without quote unquote thinking of the children. Every single time I have ever sat across from somebody who is making the difficult decision whether or not to stay in a marriage, their child has been, if not the only thing on their mind, certainly one of the most important things. To suggest otherwise, I, I think is to really misunderstand these people that you are suggesting that you wanna help. Yeah, I'm not sure where you get the idea that they just uh, disregard the children. That seems like a, I mean, even in popular TV, you see that all the time with um, the kids being involved in the decision making process. So hmm, that seems a little odd. Do you got anything else for us, Felix, or uh, is that sort of where we'd like to leave it? Yeah, that was the topic of the conversation. Thank you so much, Alan. All right. Well, fair enough. Uh, thank you so much for calling. I'm glad we could uh, we could see our way through all of this. You have a great day.